everyone, my name is Perry. I'm an electrical engineer and in this video we're going to watch Dr. Stone Season 4 Episode 17 to see how accurate all the signs of technology in this anime really are. This might be the only place that I've observed where Dr. Stone is often wrong. It's just all these equations in the back. There are plenty of real ones that already look complex. I feel like it's almost harder to make ones that are kind of real, but not quite there. Quantum mechanics has some wild ones like the Schrodinger equation. My gosh, if, if someone, imagine, somebody started with a blank sheet of paper, a few resources and a lot of time, and they ended up with something that looks like this. I don't even know what's going on. This one, for example, looks kind of real. It reminds me of a Sokotoa triangle where to find the theta using cosine, your equation is going to say cosine of theta is equal to adjacent length divided by hypotenuse length. It's not exactly the same thing as shown here. The variables could be a bit different. It just looks so similar. Why not just use the real equation? Koaku's jump is very impressive, and every once in a while they gotta anime a scene together so that the rest of the technology is legit. I'm not upset at all, still a lot of fun. あなたは旅人で川の向こうに荷物を運ぼうとしています。荷物は3つ。狐、鶏、コーン。ただしボートで一度に運べるのは1つだけ。まずはコーンを運ぼうとして狐と鶏を置いていくと。This is a very famous puzzle, and one important detail here is the man in the boat can only take one of the three at a time. The way to solve this is in seven steps. Number one is you have to start with the chicken, and then number two is you go back with an empty boat. Number three is pick up the fox. Number four, trade the fox and the chicken so that the fox is on the other side and the chicken is in the boat. Number five, go back and trade the chicken for the corn. Number six, you leave the corn with the fox on the other side and then the only thing left on the original side is the chicken. In Senku's situation, we have an added bonus of more characters and their weight playing a factor. So as far as Senku is concerned, there's a few more variables to play with. Although I don't believe that's as important as Killing Zero. They always give Gen the heavy stuff. I mean, not that it's heavy, but that jackfruit is, it, it really is that giant, actually. Which species of plants and animals do you guys think would thrive without any human interference in the Amazon? The rainforest itself would grow, my gosh, I don't know how much larger in square footage because no one's trying to cut the trees down anymore. There are entire swaths of the Amazon rainforest that are man-made, and the... Uh... Alright, that's not the best way to describe it, but they were, they were not engineered by natural selection, so I guess they, it wasn't nature made, it was engineered by humans and the whole reason for that was they wanted to grow more of the plants that created uh, Brazil nuts and cacao for example because that's what the indigenous people ate more of. With that being said, natural selection would remove a lot of those human engineered trees and plants. Pablo Escobar actually brought these hippos to Colombia from Africa and hippos are not at all native to rainforests. Their population would likely thrive though because they have no natural predators since they're invasive and there's just so much vegetation they'll just keep growing and populating the Amazon rivers. I don't even think giant anacondas or caiman could stand a chance to even a baby hippo because they all live together and yeah, invasive species will likely destroy the Amazon without human intervention because of human invasion. ムリタクル。ははは、なるほどな。最強生物を忌避してアマゾンのモンスターたちも皆近寄らないわけか。昔聞いたことあんなこれ。現地民の知恵。フィールドワーク語彙数すぎでしょ、チェルシーちゃん
I have never heard of this ant thing before. There are a diverse number of ways to die in that rainforest, and if this ant repellent actually works, then please someone let me know in the comments because I have no clue what's happening here. I don't know if it's a pheromone thing that's going on, but if if you know how this works, please let the rest of us know and I'll pin the comment right to the top. <laughs> That's a lot of Medusa. I'm guessing that none of them actually work because all the ones we've been seeing up to this point have lost battery or you have to replace the diamond. I'm actually not even sure how that initial one just recharged itself, but there's no way that any of these are actually gonna work. I also might be missing this, but what was the original motivation to petrify the Earth's population in the first place? Did they even discuss that and I just forgot about it? Where is the factory that built all of these? Anyone in engineering will tell you that tooling is very, very expensive. Changing the equipment a technician would use to assemble a product or a piece of a larger hole because the generic molds won't work is really taxing. Not only do you have to figure out the new tools that you need, those have to be made, shipped to the factory you make them, train the employees to use them, and then prepare for a lot of paperwork. Oftentimes, when I'm talking to my coworkers about an idea to solve a certain problem, one thing that's really necessary to always reiterate, the solution should not be creating more problems than it's solving. This man viewed factories as science laboratories and attempted to make a car out of soybeans powered by bioplastics and hemp. He attempted to create a city in a Brazilian rainforest focused on rubber production. One of his notable partners was Thomas Edison and they collaborated on their first electric vehicle together in the early 1900s. In 1914 he suggested the mass manufacturing of electric vehicles and he was heavily punished by the gasoline industry. During World War II, he built the first factory capable of producing aircrafts at scale. During mass production, he pioneered a system which produced one plane every 63 minutes. His name is Henry Ford. 